Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on True Story FM. I'm Pete Wright, and I'm here with Nikki Kinzer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Pete Wright. Oh, Nikki. It's March as we are recording this. It is March. We've crested into March. It is the end of the first quarter. Speaking in Crazy. business terms now, and I can't believe it. Have you done your taxes? Are you finished? No. Oh, yeah, haven't even neither. started. Oh, it's rough. I don't care. But we have we have something to help me though, and we you. Sh- we sure do. We sure do. And I might listeners. just need to start showing up. But before we talk about that, head over to takecontroladhd.com. You can get to know us a little bit better. You can listen to the show right there on the website or subscribe to the mailing list on the homepage and we'll send you an email each time a new episode is released. You can connect with us on Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest at Take Control ADHD. But to really connect with us, like to double dog dare you to connect with us, head over to the ADHD. The Discord community. It is super easy to jump in the general community chat channel. Just visit takecontroladhd.com slash discord and you will be whisked over to the general invitation and login page. If you are looking for a little more, particularly if this show has ever touched you or helped you understand your relationship with ADHD in a new way, we invite you to support the show directly through Patreon. Patreon is listener-supported podcasting. With just a few dollars a month, you can help guarantee that we continue to grow this show, add new features, invest more heavily in our community. Just visit patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast to learn more. And patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast. And one of those fantastic features is tax study halls for patrons. Nikki, what? Yes. I need help. What? <laughs> so, I figured, you know, that maybe a lot of people need help when yeah. it comes to taxes because it's one of those things that we all have to do, but man, it's hard to do and it's hard to get started and it's complicated and confusing. And so we are holding study halls, uh, which are basically body double sessions. Mm-hmm. We're not studying our taxes, uh, but we are Studying each other's taxes. <laughs> Will you study my taxes? <laughs> yeah, really. Am I doing the right thing here? Um But uh, yeah, we're going to have a couple of hours set aside on Saturday and a couple of hours set aside on Sunday uh, through the whole month of uh, March. So every Saturday and Sunday in March, um, we're going to hold those study hours. And then, of course, we are going to have more body doubling options as we get closer to the actual deadline. And I believe it's on Tuesday this year on the 18th. And so we're going to double up on Monday and Tuesday because we're here for you. Absolutely. So much taxing. (laughs) We're going to be taxing so hard over the next two months. Oh, my goodness. Well, it's really great. It's very timely. If you haven't checked it out again, patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast to become a patron, get access to all the great features plus tax study halls. You can do that right now. Now, we are talking about some classic old school business stuff today. I'm very excited about it. Uh, and uh, we have uh, one of our favorite guests to join us uh, on, on the show. And I think we should, I think we should get him in. You want to get him in? I think so. Let's get him. Aaron. The last time you were here, uh, Aaron, you shared your story of your educational and personal background meeting ADHD reality. Uh, But you know what else? You have built a successful Fortune 500 career, a highly successful training uh, business, uh, teaching your uh, 8% productivity habit. Um, And uh, you're going to talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, And you're back with us today to share how ADHD reality meets the business world and how we might find some success by pivoting this business school classic model for your own ADHD needs. I'm glad you are here to do this. It started, I think, you wrote saying you'd been doing some research, digging in on some research, and you wanted to share it. What got you into to growing down this grueling line of inquiry? <laughs> uh, so I think that a lot of ADHDers, myself included, have this uh, dream or desire to consider or pursue entrepreneurship to work for themselves. Uh, and I think that's driven by, you know, probably three things, right? So you know, we don't like being told what to do in general. Uh, And so this idea that we wouldn't have a boss telling us what to do. 
Uh, secondly, we want to do work that really feels very like meaningful. And I think we perceive that we'd have the opportunity to do that more uh, if we were working for ourselves, right? And then finally, a lot of us are looking for like scalability in terms of uh, where we're not just trading time for dollars, but we can start to see like that there's some more freedom on the horizon. And so I just got really interested in it because I just noticed that myself and all these clients and all these people I was talking with were so interested in entrepreneurship. And I, I really just wanted to dig down and understand uh, research from people that were interested in it. What was what was stopping them? And uh, and that's that's where that's where I ended up sending you that email. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, it really piqued my interest because so much about entrepreneurship, especially we're in the middle of this business series on the show. And, and so you're, you know, th this is perfect timing for this conversation. Mm -hmm. So much of entrepreneurship for me, like it is satisfied by my ADHD brain, right? Like it is an entrepreneurship is an excuse to live ADHD out loud, right? Mm. Does that make mm. sense? Am I just, I, I could be just making things up, but I certainly, that's certainly how it feels in my skin. And that's a blessing and a curse. Uh, and so I, I, I don't know. I mean, Nikki, what do you, where do you stand on this stuff? I mean, is this some of the stuff that you're coaching through? Oh, absolutely. I would say a lot of my clients are entrepreneurs. I have a group right now that I'm doing that uh, half of them in this group is our entrepreneur. So it is yeah. something that, you know, you definitely see in the ADHD community. I think that um, the ideas are so um, unique and they do have like such passion around what they're doing and what they want to do. I think the downfall is they're overwhelmed because there is so much to do yeah. and there are so many hats to wear you know, as an entrepreneur. And I think especially as people are starting out, they're very hesitant to delegate or to uh, give it to or to spend any money. And so, mm -hmm. you know, th those are some of the roadblocks that I see. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, I so mean, I would I would I would definitely love more hats. Like I can yeah. mm -hmm. I can cover some of the shine going on my forehead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I bet, I bet we Nikki's don't want to cover that. Got, I bet Nikki's got some pretty good hat collection. I could see yeah. with a strong hat. <laughs> she collects other people's hats. I do. I, yeah. I, this is this is the thing that that strikes me. It's like you know, I I taught um, I taught marketing in the MBA program at uh, Merrillhurst University, may it rest in peace, now that it's closed its doors, for many, many years. And so I I have been teaching the four P's of marketing, both the traditional four P's, product, price, price place, promotion, and uh, as it has evolved over the last few decades, including process instead of um, uh, uh, place, and uh, very, very valuable stuff. You, this is sort of the nut of your discussion and how you are you're twisting it pivoting it for ADHD walk us through what you've learned and where you stand sure so uh so the four p's the way that i learned them uh were basically product promotion pricing and process so in you know if you're interested in entrepreneurship um and now i would say that this generally would apply to not necessarily people that have already made the leap and they're running a successful business but you want to make the leap or maybe you've made the leap and you're not finding success right so if you if you pursue entrepreneurship you would come across uh some business advice that will that will angle towards here right so what you need is they will talk about that you need the four p's with market fit so product mm -hmm. market fit is does my market want to buy what i'm offering Promotion market fit is how will my target audience find out about my product? Pricing market fit is, is my pricing aligned with what my market will pay, right? You can't charge $10 million for a toaster, right? And process market fit is, you know, how do I deliver this product consistently, right? You think about like Subway sandwiches, being able to deliver these sorts of things consistently. Um, and so those are the ones that most that if you really start to outline a business, a lot of people, including uh, ADHD uh, aspiring entrepreneurs, will spend their time here just trying to figure out, like, how can I get the right product and how mm -hmm. can I how can I promote it the right way and build the right social media following? 
And I find that I find that this is a uh, ineffective way for the people I've spoken to to pursue a successful business with ADHD. Okay, why? And this is this is the thing that gets me very very excited because it's something that I don't think I've ever thought about as anything more than um, possibly an excuse. Is that that might be fair? Tell me about me. Sure. So, uh, so what I encourage ADHD entrepreneurs, and this was based on uh, interviewing, I believe, 15 entrepreneurs, uh, detailed interviews to really understand, or aspiring entrepreneurs, I should say. And so what I really found, and, and I found this for myself as well, and I would encourage you, if you're considering pursuing something entrepreneurial, rather than start with the traditional, let's just air quote, neurotypical, right, market, you know, four Ps as far as market fit. I would challenge you or encourage you to consider the four P's first from a second M, which is me. So to look at me fit. So let me tell you how that breaks down, right? So product me fit is like for ADHDers, it's kind of like if I if I don't enjoy delivering this product and I don't like it, I'm just not going to do it. Like I want to do work that feels like my true self. I don't care if it's going to make a billion dollars if I don't if it doesn't fit me. I don't want to deliver this product or service. Promotion me fit is like, if I don't enjoy my promotion activities, I won't do them. Like, I'm not going to do anything sleazy that feels gross. And if I don't like making videos, I'm just not going to do it, even if it's like what I should do, right? Oh, totally. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I feel you on that one. <laughs> right? Uh, yes. And then we could dive into all these, right? But like the pricing me fit is... Uh, you know, I want this pricing so that I can get freedom. I want to have a scalable business. And that's really what I want to build. At the same time, I don't really feel worthy to charge the prices that I would need to charge. And so you have kind of this weird pricing me fit where people feel a bit conflicted about the prices they're charging. And then honestly, I think at least the work that I do, because my other the other work I do is really focused around ADHD productivity for adults is this final one, which is process me fit. So you can have everything else lined up, all the perfect product market fit, all the even the product me fit, the whole thing, the perfect plan. But then what I see with so many people is I know exactly what to do, but I just can't get myself to do it. And if you don't have a me fit on your process where you know how to get yourself to do that which you want to do, then no amount of alignment is going to, you're not going to be able to execute on the plan. So can you define uh, what process means exactly? Yeah. So on the market fit side, it's basically like, can I deliver a consistent product or service? So like if someone walks into the Subway sandwich shop, can they get it in the same in Bethesda, Maryland as in Seattle? Um, I see. You know, if you run your GPS groups, and someone comes in, is there going to be uh, a fit where they can have a consistent experience where there's going to be like wow. quality controls or if they go would work with different coaches of yours, et cetera. Right. The me fit on process is like, what's my process? So how do I prioritize things? How do I get myself to do the things that I've decided I want to do? Um, so that's how I would define process. And then, so systems i hear the word systems a lot too and so i'm and i i just want to be clear that a system is different than a process cuz you're saying the process is making sure it's consistent no matter where you're at the the systems that you put in place in your business how is that different are those are yeah. just how you're doing your daily work or like having a, a routine of how you communicate with your people or what yeah. What does that so look like? A subset, a subset of your process would be your systems. Some okay. things can be systemized. Uh, repeatable tasks, things that you expect, things that have some level of predictability. But when you need to sit down and make a presentation for a thing that you're going to deliver on, you know, maybe you've got like a process for how you do it, but you don't necessarily have a system in place where it's like automated and repeatable. You just have to Basically, it's how do you do the work as the entrepreneur, as the CEO? How do you get yourself to do what you need to do? So it's sort of like that's that, at least at the me fit side, 
Um, right. Yeah. Because that's what I'm thinking is it has to be really individualized and custom for you right? yeah. to, to make it work. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's hard not to to think through this uh, this model and not apply it, right? Not look in the the proverbial that's the, mirror. That's the goal. I hope I and, hope we can talk about. Oh yeah, yeah. All of us applying it, and if so you're mm-hmm. listening at home, you can play along too. I mm-hmm. I think personally, for me, I've nailed the product, right? I feel like as a podcast network, I it's something that I love to do, and I have no trouble delivering the like the like think imagining doing the work sustainably i product I me fit so, so solid yeah. for pete you enjoy it 100%. i Perfect, feel right? totally solid uh solid promotion. for me too solid for you too okay so <laughs> solid we're doing round robin i thought well, we'll and, and, and we'll just round to robin. chime in because the round yeah. robin wouldn't be complete solid yeah, right. for me too right and um and this is like what i i mean I've seen this with successful people across all things, but in general, most of the success that I've seen are people that don't perceive the work they're doing as work because they enjoy it enough. Now, it doesn't Mm -hmm. mean that it's not like, would I rather be on the beach than like dealing with something at 7 p.m.? But like things that you might do on vacation or that you might do on the weekend for fun, like if you're doing those things, it's a good sign that it's something like I, I used to read productivity books and neuroscience books yes. and psychology books and self-help books for fun on the weekend and vacation. So I, I had a good sense that making that my full time job was going to continue to be fun. And it is like I'm, I laugh when I get to just have coaching calls with my groups and stuff because it's so much fun. I'm like, this is great. People will talk about this stuff with me. My wife doesn't yes. want to talk about this stuff with me. <laughs> Well, anyway, and this yeah. is uh, Melissa is uh, in our chat room. Uh, Discord moms in the chat room. If you're uh, once again, if you're a patron, you can listen along to the live streams. And Melissa is commenting, and she said something that is really astute. Normally, I wouldn't interject it in the middle of the show, but I still don't know how things get done. I'm amazed when I look back at a finished product, surprising myself that it got done. That is, I think, a sign of exactly what you're talking about, which is if the work itself for me, if it, the work itself is joyful enough and it it is a, a good me fit, then looking back on the work getting done and having it not feel like work is a is a sign of that success, is a sign that it's a good pair. That That's kind of how I'm looking at it. Uh, promotion. I think I'm okay here, but this is where I want to poke a little bit at myself because I feel like when I look at a promotional me fit, I'm... I don't love social media. There are so many platforms that I have real ideological challenges with and therefore don't use them. So I've made what I feel like is a pure decision that fits my worldview. And yet I carry the shame of not doing them for the sake of my business. If I had completed the me fit cycle in my head, I might be able to stop the the shame part and actually say, you know what? I've made the right decision and it feels good. But I'm not to that point yet. Well, I, I so I mean I think there there are really two ways to look at this and then and then I'll let Nikki uh put her opinion in here, right? So the first is uh just in terms of the looking at what is. So I would say that what you've done is a great example of the way that I approach things and that I noticed with all the ADHD aspiring entrepreneurs that I interviewed were also approaching things, which is It doesn't matter how many things you come across that tell you you should be doing this, Pete. It doesn't Mm -hmm. even matter how much you beat yourself up and how guilty you feel. If a certain type of promotion, medium, social media, whatevs doesn't jive with you, you ain't gonna do it no matter what you no matter what you say or not do. So rather than fight yourself for doing it or not doing it, just if you accept it, then then you end up with, you You have a much easier way to make a decision about next steps, right? Which is either I'm going to to just ignore that because you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to waste brain calories. And instead, mm-hmm. I'm going to double down on these areas that I am willing to do, right? I'm going to make little voice tweets or whatever, because I love doing audio, whatever it is that Pete loves, or, you know, I'm going to do that to promote and or you then back to kind of Nikki's point, you come up with a system or another way to get those things to get to show up on those platforms that you can systemize, automate, delegate, or otherwise not really be involved in. So 
-hmm. that's my two cents on it. Uh, but you did a great illustration of the fact that the me fit really does drive things for ADHD entrepreneurs. So Truly. Nikki, what are your thoughts? Well, and I think that if you really have issues with, you know, some of the platforms, I think you, you are doing the right thing by staying away because it's not the only way to promote your business. And that's what I'll tell clients is that they'll feel, they feel this need to be on social media. And I'm like, you know, you don't have to be, you can still find other ways to promote yourself and other ways to, to build your business that, that doesn't mean you have to make, you know, post every day on Facebook or Instagram or whatever that might be. Um, I would say for, for me, promotion is not solid. I think there's a lot of work to be done. Um, and I am opening myself up to, to those opportunities and seeing what, what's available. I don't think we do it as well as we could. And I don't think we do it enough. And so there's, there's definitely, um, room for improvement. But I will say one, one thing I did make a change last year is I had an assistant who really did push me on, oh, you need to do videos. You need to do this with Facebook and da, 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 and really tried to get me out there on, on social media. And I finally decided, you know, I really don't want to put my time in Facebook. I want to put my time in Patreon. I would rather go to my Discord members and post there and reply there and really build that community who are already following us, you know, because of our podcast, they're supporting us. That's where I want to put my time. And that was yeah. a big shift to say, okay, this is where I want to go instead. Uh, they are, takes, I mean, they're you know, the most time important to learn that. people. Totally. They're right, the most totally. important people in our universe. Like there's, right. there's no doubt about it. Shh, are they listening right now? They are the I most so. important people in our universe. <laughs> um, I, it, so I, I go back to that, Nikki. Like I want to, I just want to push at, at that one piece you just said, like not thinking that you do it, that, that you're promoting enough is different from promoting in alignment with your values, like your me value. Right. I yeah, mean, is that, right. a, is that I a agree. fair statement? Yes, yes. Well, especially because it goes back to your product. Like if we're just looking yeah. at the podcast, I really love our podcast. I believe yes. in everything that we do. And I know our intentions are to, you know, really help the ADHD community and support them and build that. So absolutely, like, I don't have a problem promoting it. It's, it's with my value system, but it's just, yeah, the avenues of it. You know, it's been a challenge for me. I'll be perfectly transparent um you know i grew up uh we we were upper middle class whatnot but i don't know it was just like it was like a jewish household and like we weren't really supposed to spend money on ourselves like we would just shop at all like the thrift stores and like the you know it's just like I, we didn't i didn't grow up feeling okay spending money on myself and then and i see this with a lot of my um productivity group students is as an adult, as I wanted to have, uh, as I wanted to grow and deal with some of my procrastination and productivity issues, I felt that like I wasn't allowed to invest in myself because I'd uh, squandered the support growing up, and you know I was just too lazy or whatever my mom said, and uh, and so I had all this guilt and shame about spending money on coaching and support. So then when I launched a coaching business, you know. I had to deal with a lot of those uh, old stories and uh, and and just just really deal with it. And I'm still dealing with it. So, mm -hmm. like, you know, I I put together like a group program, and right now it's like six months long. And I'm like looking at Eric Tivers, who I love, right? Eric and I are good friends, and I you know you, you know like. I'm like, okay, cool. He's got like a 10 week program. That's like three grand. I'm like, all right, I'm going to make my six month program like nine ninety seven. You know, it's just like me and my, my business coach is like, yeah, you're changing lives. Like you got to up the price here. So I, I'm not like, it's, it's a constant evolution. And I'd say mm -hmm. I'm still growing in that area being comfortable charging uh, at the level that of what I deliver. But you know, that's the, that's the growth as an entrepreneur. Right. Right. I imagine right. you also have no trouble telling other people that they're not charging enough. 
I mean, ultimately, here's what I here's what I do tell people. T- tell people, Pete. People, Pete. Tell people, Pete. Uh, <laughs> is is that ultimately you need the me fit, right? So mm-hmm. because here's the thing. If I were to push somebody to say, you need to be charging more and they're not aligned, it doesn't have a me fit with them, right? Like my beliefs about money and all those things haven't evolved to the point where, I'll, where I'm charging $2,000, $3,000 for my program. They probably will. Like my mm-hmm. program is listed right now at $2,000. It's just currently 50% off. Um, right. for, you know, I don't know how long that'll last, right? The longest yeah. last is my, but what happens is that if I, if I were to push someone, I'd be like, no, you need to charge $2,000 now. And they're not aligned. They won't be able to sell it because, yes. so I would never push someone outside of their, I would push them to maybe consider some of their money beliefs and their stories and look at how by charging more, they can serve their people better. Mm-hmm. Um, and that sort of thing, because I know mm-hmm. a lot of amazing coaches and a lot of people with the biggest hearts in the world who could literally transform thousands or millions of lives who are broke and or not doing this. They only have like five hours a week to do what they could do. And so they're not impacting very many lives because they under they charge, you know, they're trying to like charge nothing or very little. Yeah. Right. So I, I would I would encourage them to revisit some of their money stories. And do some of that work like I've been doing, but I wouldn't push them outside of the me fit because we're we're all rigidity rebels. We're just we're stubborn as can be, and if we're not, we don't feel aligned. We're just we just call time out and say screw it. Yeah, then it doesn't experience. come across authentic. You know, yeah. then it, it it becomes really that authenticity becomes lost very quickly. I always I always think of it this way: if I wouldn't pay it myself, then I'm not going to charge it. So I'm going to charge whatever I think I would pay myself. I mean, like if it was another product or service that I was looking at, yeah, then yeah. yeah. This is this is one that I think, and I appreciate um, all of your candor here, Aaron, because you just hit like right in the sweet spot of of my tender, em- emotionally terrified center around pricing and the me fit, right? Like that is um, the hardest thing for me to get around and it has been for nearly two decades I've been doing this myself and it doesn't matter who I talk to whether it's a coach or a client they say the same thing you're undercharging and I struggle finding the me fit for for pricing in a way that is is comfortable for me what I wish in in my heart of hearts is that the entire world was a great big Patreon. And I could just say, here's Pete's Patreon. And I'll work for anybody. You pay me what you think I'm worth. And I'll just do my best. And I won't have to have a menu or a price tag. And I just do what's fine. That's the ideal. And as yet, I have not discovered that model to uh, actually work. Well, I mean, the nice thing, the nice thing is that at least you're, 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 you've made it over the hump where you can at least be in business for yourself. Right. Yes. Because yeah, if we look true. at, if we look at phases of business, right. Like there's kind of that launch phase where like, maybe you can't support yourself. Right. Yeah. And then, and then that, so you're kind of get to stabilization, then you could be at like growth and, you know, scaling and that sort of thing. But at least if you're stable. So one thing that I think was really helpful coaching that I got and that I give to other people, right. Is, this idea that if you are an aspiring entrepreneur or your company is young and hasn't gotten to stabilization, uh, that uh, to to follow the Tesla model for how they how they did their business. Um, so Elon Musk's goal has always been to have kind of a electric car for everyone, right? At like the twenty five thousand dollar price range or something, mm-hmm. uh, and a lot of you know. Obviously, I work in like the helping spaces. Do you both? Uh, and like a lot of the ADHDers I've talked to really have these golden hearts and just want to help all these people. And so they want to start at how can I have like a five dollar, ten dollar, thirty dollar a month community that helps all these people because that's super affordable. And it's fine if you can make it work, uh, mm-hmm. but I find that it's a much lower risk proposition to follow Tesla's model, which was we want to be able to have this low price product that will serve everybody. So we're going to start by selling our first product is going to be an $100,000 premium vehicle. 
-hmm. which is going to give us cash in the door and let us get to stabilization. Then we can start to take on our, you know, make a dent in the universe and help all the, you know, people ideas. But if you never get to stabilization, you're going back to your other jobs. And now you have like a lot less time to work on your business. And so that was a really helpful thing for me to get that coaching on, um, to start with the higher priced, you know, the one-on-one -on -one coaching, the premium sort of thing, and then work my way down to now where I can offer a six month coaching program for 997. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Um, did you want to jump in on pricing, Nikki? I feel like I... No, no. Okay. You guys so, covered it well. I, I think process for me is another one. Like if I look at where my my pain points are in terms of the me fit, it's promotion or pricing. Those two are are the, the areas that I'm still exploring. Uh, product and process, I feel like I'm doing okay. Process, when you look at process as a collection of systems that allow me to deliver my product, I know I can do it for me. And I have I deliver podcasts for my clients and to scale up, I had to frankly just hire more people. And now I have a partner and another editor. And uh, for some of my shows, uh, not this one, but some of my shows, I actually have others edit the, the work that I used to do and held as sacrosanct. Like that was something that no one else would touch. But I had to get over that in order for it to maintain a me fit, because I wasn't going to be able to sustainably deliver so many shows by myself. It would crumble, I would fall off the tracks, whatever metaphor you want to think. So I think I I think I have a way to sort of interrogate my process me fit pretty well. N Nikki, where are you on process? <laughs> oh. <laughs> that wasn't a laugh line. <laughs> <laughs> it is a serious work in process or work work in process. <laughs> Isn't that we'll funny that it. I said that? <laughs> work in progress for the process. Um th this, you know, take control ADHD definitely went through some changes last year by adding some coaches. Um and uh and I don't know. I'm still figuring it out. I'm still trying to figure out what this all means. Yeah. It, 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 it scaling is 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 strange when you have a coaching service. Yeah. So I I don't know. I don't know. I have no answer to that. I'm <laughs> figuring it out. Aaron, give us help. <laughs> totally. Uh so look, I think that I think that, uh, you know, Nikki was talking about sort of the, the market process fit um, in terms of how do we, uh, you know, get this coaching and stuff scaled and delivered in a way that works. And, you know, I, that, is, that is the challenge that a lot of entrepreneurs run into as they grow and scale. I think what I see, it, especially with the, you know, younger entrepreneurs and the aspiring entrepreneurs, is that the process me fit is honestly the biggest obstacle uh because they can they can have everything else aligned they can love the product they can even be willing to do the type they can find the kind of promotion this sort of video or audio or text or whatever promotion they're doing and they can even find pricing they're aligned with uh but i mean if they if they can't get themselves to do those actions uh it's all for naught. It's just it's just yeah. a fancy idea in their heads. And, you know, what I see with so many people is just this. I want to do it. I either can't get started or I get started and I can't stay on task or I get started. I can stay on task. But then my motivation just disappears, you know, a day or a week or a month later. And I just go on to the next shiny object and I lose it and I forget where I was going. And so without the ability to maintain the consistency of execution and to see something through past two weeks or four weeks uh, is, is a critical skill for success. And that, that is honestly, you know, something that most of the ADHDers that I work with in my productivity group struggle with. Um, like to do what you two have done, you know, and Nikki's done and run, you know, I mean, how many seasons, how long have you been executing this podcast? You know, I mean, so many, long. Many, many years. Just, yeah. Like yeah. just 
I mean, I, I can't even keep track of the number of seasons and episodes. I mean, it's just, it's astronomical. Uh, and most people listening wouldn't have the, the me, the me fit on their process yet to be able to do what you two have done in this podcast, for instance. And there has definitely been a pro. I mean, the yeah. the process has changed over time as far as like the style of the show and everything. But sure. no, but the consistency is there, and that and 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 showing up to do it, I think, is yeah, yeah. He's he's saying, yep, yep, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. It, it is so important. I wonder when you look at these business folks that you interviewed, to what degree. Have they been able to prioritize this the the me part of this equation? And I mean, is is that really what you're uncovering? That they the, to what degree they do or don't prioritize themselves in the four Ps? Yeah. So the people I spoke with were aspiring entrepreneurs, and so they they haven't done this to an effective way. And the biggest challenge is if you Google you know, how to start a business or you watch YouTube videos on it. Everything is going to start with market fit with the four P's with market, you got to find something that's in demand. And it's, it's this outside in approach. And it you could come up with the best Amazon drop shipping thing that's going to make you 10 million. It, for the people I've seen, I strongly encourage the other direction, right? And start with the me fit, figure out mm -hmm. those things that really that light you up. Think about the product, think about, you know, the product or service that the stuff that you do, that doesn't feel like work. The other people are like, wow, you, you organize my bathroom for fun as my guest, because you like how it looks like, you know, like those things that you mm -hmm. do that other people are just like, why are you reading neuroscience books on vacation? That's weird. You know, mm -hmm. those things that you do that don't feel like work to you. And if you can, you know, you can think about how I could turn those into a business. You can think about what are, you know, what are some of the, you can get your process sorted, right? So like, uh, you know, there's so many people I know in corporate that are like, I want to start a business so I can have, you know, I have more choice over what I do. And they struggle with making decisions. Guess what? Yeah, if you go from right. a job to your own boss. And the amount of decisions about what you could work on goes up a hundredfold. So mm -hmm. you can start yeah. to master this process around making decisions, how to prioritize, how to get yourself, as Nikki said, to show up, to do the work that you commit to. Uh, those are the kind of things that if you start with the me fit, you'll, lead, you'll get yourself to a successful business much more easily than if you try to force yourself like a square peg into a round hole of like, here's a perfect plan on paper. I don't want to execute any of it because I hate the product and the pricing and the process and the promotion. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. that I think is, is real wisdom is starting with the me fit when you're looking for a, a new business, because uh, especially for ADHD, because everything else can be a cascading like list of failures. If you just try to find a hole in the market to fill and that hole doesn't what it, what you fill it with doesn't actually light you up, right? Like like how many times have we seen that? I think that's hugely important to take a step back and work more slowly. Well, and managing the expectations too, because you know what, it is hard having your own business. It is not easy, <laughs> and there yeah. is a lot of work behind the scenes that people don't see or you know or realize until after they're they're trying to do it themselves and so if you can keep persevering and keep you know knowing that yeah this is going to be hard and be uncomfortable with it you know being comfortable with being uncomfortable with how hard it is but keep pushing yourself through because it's not it's not always glamorous to be your own boss <laughs> can i i'm hmm what if we turn this question kind of upside down a little bit for those listening who don't consider themselves entrepreneurs? Uh, how, have you have you thought through how the model kind of works for people with the the nine to five, eight to five, seven? Yeah, who are, I mean, I would say that's a great that's a great question, Pete, um, and definitely one I wasn't anticipating. And uh, but now now that you ask it, I mean, I would say that one way or another, the product and the process fit. You, if you just start from those two, 
right? Because obviously you're not going to necessarily have pricing or promotion in the quite sure. same way. Yes, I get it. You can show up in interviews a certain way, but you're 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 pretty constrained on your pricing and promotion options. But that me fit on the process and the product, right? So, you know, again, you could look at the kinds of work that you do. And if you can find work or craft your existing job to really leverage those things that, oh, you like cleaning up other people's spreadsheets and formatting them and because you think that's meditative and enjoyable, like definitely do more of that because I don't want to do it. Uh, right. And so right. if you can really align to that process fit about, or sorry, the, the product fit about what you enjoy delivering. And then again, I mean, the process me fit uh, or the lack thereof is what I see is just, you know, and again, take it with a grain of salt because my specialty is working with ADHD adults who can't get themselves to do what they want to do. So obviously yeah. I see more of it, but like, I feel like that process me fit is the biggest gap to delivering either in a business or, you know, just as an employee. Uh, if you can't get yourself to do the things that are most important and get yourself to show up and figure out how to do that prioritization, then you're, you're not going to be successful in your career or in entrepreneurship at yeah. the level that you're capable of. Mm -hmm. I so agree with that because it's so, um, it's one of those things that if you're really not happy in your job for whatever reason, whether you don't like the product or you don't like the process or you just don't like what you're doing, make it a priority to get a different job. Yeah. Because we <laughs> That's just a good priority. Spent, <laughs> yeah, because it we spend so much time doing work, right? I mean, we have it's just the way we're set up right now is that we have to work more than we play, which is ridiculous in my opinion. But anyway, um the uh but I, I from what you're saying, Aaron, I relate that to people who are working and they're and they're miserable. It's like let's get out of that misery and and find something and, and maybe entrepreneur you know, being an entrepreneur may be the right step for you. And maybe it's not, but finding a company that you believe in yeah. and you love and are passionate about, you're going to be a lot happier. Yeah. Uh, 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 awesome stuff, Aaron, as always. Yeah. So glad you came back to to share this with us. You, uh, you already mentioned a little bit about your coaching, uh, but tell us where to find out more and, and tell us a little bit about um, the the kind of coaching you're doing specifically around this stuff? So uh, I am doing a little, a very limited, I mean, we're talking like one or two spots open uh, for one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, with entrepreneurs that are looking to set up or grow their business and just sharing what I've learned over the last however many years and spending 30,000 plus on coaching for myself. Mm -hmm. uh, but the pricing on that is premium and it's out of the reach for most people. And so you know, my my real passion and joy is spending time on my Productivity Transformation Academy. And that's working with ADHD adults uh, who can't get themselves to do what they want to do. And they feel trapped because they know that they're living below their potential. And they want the freedom that productivity brings, the freedom to do work they enjoy, the freedom to get to the end of the day and not feel bad about themselves, the freedom to live life on their own terms. And so that is, that's my flagship program. It's a six month group coaching program. And um, yeah, so that, that's that. But ultimately if people want information on that, I would recommend that they first watch a free training I've developed. It's about 40 minutes long, I think, uh, which is basically how to complete tasks you've, been, you've put off for months without relying on willpower. Uh, and that's a free training that I have. And that really outlines my whole 8% productivity habit and how the system works. And that's right. at freeadhdtraining.com. Freeadhdtraining.com. I went for a difficult URL. Good plug. Good plug. <laughs> yeah. Good plug. <laughs> well, and we'll also, I'll, I'll also put in the notes. We've got this, uh, we've got your TikTok. Uh, the, you posted this about three minute TikTok video walking through this as well. If you want to hear yep. Aaron, and if you are not following Aaron on TikTok, uh, you can do so that way. Look for the link in the show notes. Aaron Croft, uh, thanks. Thanks for being here. It's great to see you. Always a pleasure, Pete and Nikki. Thank you. 
Thank you. And thank you all for downloading and listening to this show. We appreciate your time and your attention. Don't forget, if you have something to contribute to this conversation, we're heading over to the Show Talk channel in our Discord server, and you can join us right there by becoming a supporting member at the deluxe level or better. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer and Aaron Croft, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll see you right back here next week on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. Thank you.